Welcome to video four in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. Uh, this video's topic is the face mill toolpath. Basically, the face mill is a common toolpath used for just the clearing of material off the top face of, of a part using uh, any tool, really. The toolpath allows you to use any diameter of tool. So let's begin. So we'll go to the milling operation. Face mill is the first of the basic 2D, 2.5D toolpaths from SolidCam. The workflow on the left side is the same as any one of our other toolpaths. We'll begin with the geometry. Face mill is unique in that it gives you the three types of geometry selection for um, the geometry used in this toolpath. That being model or solid, so any 3D object, any 3D solid on the screen you can choose, faces or surfaces. So really any face of the part, any any just basic surface created in SolidWorks you can use here, or profile, any chain, any contour, any solid edge of the part you can use in these selections. So let's go through each one, one by one, and we'll see how they use and the benefits of using one over the other. So with the model option, we'll go to base geometry, define, and all I'm gonna do is just choose the solid that I'd like to face. Really doesn't matter which edge of it I choose or which face of it I choose, I just say, that's my solid, and it'll create the geometry to show the area that it's actually going to face off. In this case, the yellow line is the outside edge of that solid. Now, why the, how that works, why that matters, is if we go and define it not as the stock solid, but as the target. If I choose the target, you see that it, it finds the outside edges of that solid, meaning that edge there and not of the stock. So again, it's just really just facing off the top surface of the part, including that imaginary corner. Okay. Now, if I were to go to the faces option and define, how that actually works is in a similar way. So if I choose this face, the top face of the stock, we'll still get that same yellow contour on the top surface of the stock. But watch what happens when I choose that same surface that I chose for the, st for the target solid. If we get a perpendicular view of that, it's actually now just the outside edge of that surface alone. So this is useful for a part that has various surfaces on it, even if they're curved surfaces. If you want to just do a, uh, a planar face on the top of any part, just choose a surface, and then the outside edges of the surface, of the face, will be used to generate that square geometry. Now, if you wanted to go even further and be very specific of where you're facing, Let's say, for instance, it's I just need to face this top surface after doing all the pocketing. Well, if I go to Profile, it actually gives me an even further control by choosing Contours. So, so let's say, for instance, I choose that edge right there, and we'll do Constant Z Propagation, and this edge right here, Constant Z Propagation. So now I have two chains indicating to the face mill operation that I just want to do just in between those two chains. Now the yellow line still indicates the outside edge, but those two chains are telling solid, solid cam that I want to uh, face mill in between those two. Okay, so I'll leave those behind. There's face mill one, and there's face mill. So one is the entire part as created using the solid, in that case the target solid. And face mill one is going to be just my contours. So we'll generate both of those and we'll see what happens. So let's just start with face mill. Again, we're just going to choose a tool, just like any other operation. Uh, the specifics of how we choose a tool, how we create a tool, I covered in video two. So I would refer you to that to see how you could create a tool. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go right to the archive, the face mill archive, and choose this two inch face mill. Okay, green check mark to accept that tool. Levels, this will just be the top of the material I want to remove, in this case, the top of the stock. And then face mill, I'm going to face it down to that face on the part. Okay, I'll give it a 100 thou depth of cut. Now, because the 100 thou is larger than the actual face, it's really just going to do this in, in one depth of cut. But I'm still going to give it a 10 thou offset so I can do a finishing pass. In the technology section, you'll see that we have actually separate technologies. For now, 
I have it set to hatch, which means it's just going to use an overlap of 30% of the tool diameter. It's going to do it in one way, so it's a one way zigzagging back and forth. But the one way actually means it'll retract and reposition itself to continue that. Uh, and then the second tab always reflects the technology that you've selected. So in this case, the hatch, it shows me that I can put an angle on here. So rather than following the x-axis completely, I can put an angle on the x-axis. Uh, it is a face mill, so I want to extend over the sides of that geometry. So we can do that with hatch by going along and across the toolpath. It is a hatch, so we can do a zigzag back and forth, or I can switch it to one way, and it'll actually continue to climb cut as it goes along. It'll just have to retract and reposition. Okay. And like I said, under technology, we'll choose the other technologies here. So instead of a hatch, if we were to choose a contour, you can see that it changes the toolpath to a contour toolpath. And again, inside the second tab, we have specifics of how that contour toolpath will work. At the corners, if I don't want it to do an exact 90 degree turn, I can switch it so that it has a nice fillet at the corners. And you can see that in the bottom left corner once again. And these will be the corner radii that you would use. Again, climb milling or conventional. And an extension over the edges of 10% of the tool or whatever you choose to put. If the tool is large enough, I could do a final pass or one pass. Or if I wanted to do a nice looking spiral, I could do the same thing. And I can just tell it the specifics of that. But let's go with the hatch for this one. And under link, you have control over your lead in, lead out. And again, just choose from the pull down menu. In this case, a tangent lead in. But I think for this one, I'm just going to go with none, save and calculate. And we can take a look at that toolpath. So the geometry for this one was the complete face. If I take a look at that, you can see the purple is the complete face with the imaginary corners and everything. We zigzagged back and forth. Now, if I did a save and copy, and this time under my geometry, choose face one. So this, this time was that contour geometry that profile geometry, that is only those thin walls there. And if I did a save and calculate on that, we'll see that it actually is only doing the areas in between those two chains. In this case, I may want to change this to a contour. And if we take a look at that, it's only doing the areas in between those two chains. So there's a benefit to choosing the different types. If you want to do the entire thing, if it's your first face milling operation, then you probably want to do the entire stock. If I were just facing off the top surface of a part after doing drilling and pocketing and that sort of thing, I just want to take care of that particular area, then I can do so by choosing just profile geometry. Okay. That concludes the face mill toolpath video video four of the series. If you have any questions on this or any other toolpath, you can give us a call at the Matex support line at 1-866-975-1115, extension two, uh, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos for the other toolpaths in, inside Solacam. Thank you for watching.